tech earnings are very much front and center for investors this week. Shares in Tesla fell after hours on the back of quarterly profit, which missed expectations despite record deliveries. Meanwhile, Apple reported a beat on the top and bottom line, but still saw the stock move lower. And Facebook rallied after strong earnings, revenues and active user figures. Joining me to discuss some charts today is Lee Sanford, the founder of tradingcollege.co.uk. Lee, great to chat to you. Let's start with uh, the NASDAQ more broadly, which was, of course, um, a bit of an outperformer last year. Uh, In terms of yesterday's price action, it was a really interesting day on Wall Street, the worst day essentially since uh, October. What are you expecting for the rest of the week and into next week for the tech-heavy NASDAQ? I think yesterday was was a good day for the bears. They took control of the market yesterday. Um, At the moment, if you look at the NASDAQ chart, it's just a blip. Whether we're going to get some more selling, I think today is a really important day. Um, I think we we need this correction. I mean, if I look at the chart here on the monthly of the NASDAQ, we are so extended away from the short period moving average, the A period moving average here. We just need... A healthy correction. Um, and we could continue higher, but I think it, today's an important day. This week's an important week, I think. And, um, you know, if we start making lower lows uh, and lower highs on the NASDAQ, then we could see maybe a bit further of a correction. I think some of the other stock indexes are showing a bit more of a bearish chart, but the NASDAQ is still holding up here at the moment. Let's talk about Tesla because, of course, that's been a massive outperformer over the last year. It's rallied by more than 100% since the start of November alone. In terms of these earnings, we got a miss on the profit figure for the first time in uh, over a year, which spooked the stock price. Do you think that this sort of move back will be seen as an opportunity to pick up this stock a little bit more cheaply, or is this a sign of a bit more hesitation ahead? I think there's a little bit more hesitation ahead. I think it's a great time to take profits. If you look at the monthly chart of Tesla, I mean, it has gone parabolic. I mean, we are so far away. The angle of the moving average is 45 degrees on the monthly chart. I think it's a good time to bank some profits in Tesla, depending what your time horizon is on this stock. But if you look at the daily charts, I think we're just starting to roll over a little bit here maybe seeing some red on the board and our momentum indicators are just losing a little bit of momentum to the upside. So I don't think, Victoria, that this area here isn't such a bad place to bank some profits from a trading point of view, from an investing point of view. If you're long term, I think we could see even higher prices on Tesla. So I think a cautionary tale at the moment, just be careful, you know, because I think these next two days are going to be very interesting uh, for the stock markets in general. And I think if we start to see the global markets having a correction, it's going to bring all the good stocks down as well, including Tesla and the apples of this world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So that brings us on to Apple, which also had earnings last night, which were undeniably strong on the top and bottom lines, particularly strong sales uh, in China. But nonetheless, investors were sort of uh, selling the fact um, in terms of the pullback that we saw after hours. Is this just because there was a general sense of unease uh, in the markets yesterday anyway, and Apple got caught up in that? Or is it just that expectations are so high for a stock like Apple? Yeah, I think a bit of both there, Victoria. You know, Apple's had a great run. And as I said, when we see a correction in all stock markets around the world, you know, it's going to bring down the best stocks as well. But I think if you look at Apple here, um, you know, if we look at a wave count from an analysis point of view, we've had some lovely waves pushing high up, nice corrections. We're just at the top here of this final wave. The key to the whole market, what I was seeing yesterday, and we, I might go back and look at the NASDAQ on the four hours, because I want to show you something there, but we are getting major divergences on a lot of the key markets. And you can see here that Apple has a huge bearish divergence. And bearish divergences tend to be corrective moves, especially after a five-wave advance here. So we're in this area. I certainly want, wouldn't want to buy Apple because it's at the top of this trend with major divergence. I think we'll get better value if we see a decent pullback and then continue to buy some Apple shares. But at this area here, I think it's high risk. Let's move on to uh, the DAX in Germany. In terms of this year's price action, 2021 started off really well. We saw gains in the first week, but it's since come under pressure. And that seems to be accelerating a bit uh, this week. Give us your technical thoughts on the German index. Absolutely. I think 
the, the German index, the DAX, the monthly chart, we've always got to go to the bigger time frame, especially if you're a position trader. And I think on the monthly side, we'll drop down to the daily in a second. But at the monthly, we have got, once again, three-way divergence. Okay, three-way divergence is what it basically means is price continues to make new highs, but the momentum indicators that you're using are making lower highs. And you can see here, we've got a bit of a trend line going across the highs from 2017 to 2020. And that candlestick spike through the highs could be telling for the DAX. Because if we've got a three-way divergence and we've got that little spike through and a fake through 14,000, we could see a much deeper correction in the German DAX. And if we go down to the daily time frame, what we've done here is we have started to make a lower low. So this next, this next pullback or this next uh, retracement back to the mean, do we start to see another move down? We have to really start to get above 13,955 to really get back on board the long side here, Victoria. Okay, let's have a quick look at some of the currency markets. Should we start off with uh, the dollar index? Obviously, we had the Fed last night, not too much change going on there. Um, we have seen the dollar basket manage to hold firmly above that key psychological support of uh, 90. But nonetheless, we are firmly in a downtrend. Do you see us uh, posting lower lows uh, in the future? Do you see us continue to move lower? Yes, I do. And I don't think at this current time we're going to see that. I think we're going to get a rally back up to 91, 92 area. Of course, this is a great big double bottom, isn't it? You know, we've got a, a support area around that 90, as you said. So we tend to bounce from major support areas and then rally and then retest that support area. And that's where we could break through. So, you know, if you look at the other side of it, if you look at the euro dollar, uh, if we just have a little look at that, um, you know, there was a major correction coming on that at some point because of the weekly. Once again, as I said, these two-way divergences bringing the euro down slightly, but there is no major trend change yet in the dollar or the euro dollar at all. Let's look at another um, dollar cross table uh, since the September lows has had a pretty good uh, run. It's rallied by about 7%. Had a bit of a pullback yesterday and today. Is this an opportunity to buy the dip in the pound, do you think? Yes, I think it is. I, I, you know, Once again, if we go and take a look at the bigger time frame from where it's come from here, a huge divergence on the monthly chart started to push it higher. I've got 142.63 as a potential target. So any pullbacks are buying opportunities here. Um, and yeah, and you know, it, the volatility is quite low on this at the moment, but I think any pullbacks to 135 could be an opportunity to get long cable. All right, Lee, it was great to chat to you as always. Thank you so much for sharing Thank your you. analysis. And that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much. I guess Lee Sanford, the founder of tradingcollege.co.uk. I'm Victoria Scholar, and we'll see you very soon. For more videos like these, subscribe to our YouTube channel, IG UK, and make sure to follow us on Twitter. We're at IGTV.